Julian Hardy, your new baby is uh, coming on nicely, getting ready for a Dakar debut. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think we've, we've done pretty well. Uh, I don't think we planned the year that way. It's just happened that we did 3,000 plus kilometers of testing. And uh, the car seems to be up for the challenge. Hopefully we, we don't hit in, uh, any major issues during the race. But look, this is what we need to go that for, you know, test, uh, test the car in real racing conditions. It's always different to testing in, you know, privately. And Dakar always brings surprises and little quirks. Yeah, there's always a theme. Each Dakar is a new issue we haven't seen before. If it's not the, the steering belt, it's the cooling or it's uh, gearbox issues or something on the suspension. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully we've, we've ticked the boxes as best as we could. It's been uh, four months. Yesterday we started driving the car. Absolutely relentless. <laughs> Brian will confirm he's done thousands of laps on our test tracks. Um, we've had the two races which we completed. Uh, one test in Namibia, one in Uppington. We, the cooling is very good on the car. We, uh, we tested in 40 degrees in the soft sand. The car is perfectly normal. You've taken, made some quite big changes from the six in terms of the transmission. I mean, yes, it's four wheel drive, but different diffs different um, suspension articulation system, a lot of commonality. What is the thinking behind that? And, and it must have taken quite a while to work all of that stuff out. Yeah, the, it, it boils down to, being, to me being very lazy, actually. Uh, I hate having to work on the car at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because some parts are unreliable. And the idea started a long time ago, 2012, where we really had a horrendous stack car in South America. And ever since then, uh, I've realized, you know, being a client car or a customer car, we have to make it affordable. You need to be able to service the car with a minimal input and minimum amount of mechanics. Ideally, you want two mechanics because it's so expensive nowadays, all these big races to send crew around. Um, so, yeah, the, everything has evolved from there. From having to replace rod ends every night and redoing wheel alignments, we now hopefully have a front and a rear suspension. What I'm hoping the target is not to touch it for all that car. We, we don't have to do any service. No reshimming, no regrease. Well, regreasing, yes, but no opening parts. That's the idea. Where that will happen, we will see. In testing, we've done 3,000 kilometers successfully. Um, but yeah, there are very, uh, very few serviceable items on the car now, on the suspension side. Um, on the transmission side, yes, it's also different. From all the experience we've uh, gathered on the CR6, we've, uh, we've tried to apply as much as possible. Yeah. We know the big wheels, we know the, the CV joints and the side shall be effect on them. And also very positive signs from the new parts. Uh, no major way anywhere, the, the differentials were opened uh, this week. We don't see any sign of wear, nothing is moving. It's been built very strong in America. Uh, and I think that uh, the customers will really appreciate the gains there. Uh, it's all going well to buy the car, but as you know, you know to run a Dakar, you spend uh, almost a third of the value of the car on spare parts, usually, typically. Uh, some cars are worse than others. We try to be the best in that field. Uh, with the diffs, you should end up with running the whole Dakar with the same um, diffs? Uh, we've already done it 3,000 Ks. We're going with the diffs as is. We haven't changed a part. So let's see. <laughs> we hope. We hope. We, we have two spare diffs, but uh, look, it's a very different Dakar for Brian and we're all on the same page that this is development race for us. We need to put the mileage, we need to extend the logical mileage. You know, people say halfway in Dakar, replace everything. Who, who foots the bill every time? I want this car to almost do a full Dakar without re replacing parts. And so far, 3,000 Ks of testing, we haven't really replaced parts on the car. So beside your normal consumables like your brake discs and your pads, but even that in Dakar is not a highway item. Uh, if it's cooled properly, you should get the mileage. It will be very interesting to see. We have a, a decently quick guy here, uh, and then you've got Brian on the other side. It will give us a good indication of the way on the pass as well. And uh, yes, it's a bit of a gamble, but it's also a budget thing for us. We, we've been stretched for two years now with development. We don't have unlimited budget. We don't have you know, the kind of money that Toyota would spend in development. We don't have that. We do what we can, and uh, Brian understands the risk. If we, yeah, like I said before, if we end up a stage or two not finishing because a part reaches its limit, so be it. But uh, there's no other way to fast-track development. The, the, that part of going to the race and showcasing the car's capabilities, 
is vital to keep the order book full. You've got a full order book now. Ten cars next year. That's kind of, kind of a big thing. We let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> I've been counting things all the way through the workshop. Yeah, it's, it's looking very good. We, um, we almost sold out for next year. It's almost now choosing uh, where we want the cars to go. Typically, we could have sold more cars into China. I've been slowing things down because I want a strong European presence. We've, as you know, you've, we've won a big race in, in Brazil this year. So South American continent is looking good as well. I want to try to spread the cars for maximum exposure in different markets. It's important. If something happens in China, again, you know, you can't lock all your, have all your eggs in one basket. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been quite a ride because already now we have the fifth chassis almost completed. Uh, we four months into the project, so it's quite, uh, it's quite something. What are you most proud of on this car? The thing that you gives you the, the deepest lovely feeling in your insides? Uh, the fact that we went to the first test and we ran out of petrol, that was not part of the plan. Uh, no, incredible. We usually, we used in, in old days to tow the cars back with a rope from the test track, especially new cars. And now we went there and we ran and ran and ran until we ran out of fuel and we had to drive back to the workshop. That was day one. Um, and probably the trait I like most about the car, and Brian will confirm, is the stability. The thing is incredible. It, uh, the weight goes around corners. It's, uh, this guy comes from a Toyota. He was just blown away. He couldn't understand how we could go so fast around corners. So hopefully the base is very strong. Uh, there's still work to do suspension-wise. I don't think we where we, we should be. But again, it's all new to us. Ten years since we last built a four-wheel drive and they were very different. With small wheels and limited travel. It's now a different animal. It's wider, it's got more travel, the big wheels, more power, heavier as well. So, and uh, yeah, our X6 back in the days were about the same way, two tons. So, but it's chalk and cheese. We can't really compare the two cars. You talk about you're not really where you want to be. The thing with racing cars is when you think you are where you want it to be, there's another goal and it never stops that continual development and evolving it carries on yeah it's like the russian dolls now you keep opening one there's another one behind it's true it's only what we know today you know um but in terms of comfort i think we can still improve we it, it looks very similar the suspension but the dynamic is very different the kinematic is different from the cr6 so we literally had to throw everything we had settings wise out of the window and start again um, but it's, it's very interesting because uh, in terms of control and speed and all that, I think it's there. But again, maybe we're losing a lot of time. We don't know about it. We don't have a reference yet. Our only reference is a two-wheel drive car, which is a very different animal. Um, but uh, yeah, and then, you know, it was, again, it's only four months. We had more, we had other priorities in the suspension in a way. We tried to do everything together, but we had to focus more on other things like the engine and the, the response of the engine. And given the time we had and the resources in the workshop, we did what we can with the shocks. It's been three, three big changes on the front and the rear shocks, and we, we're now getting into the window. Um, hopefully in Dakar, we can keep playing with it and, and opening the shocks and changing. It's just a, a time-consuming exercise, and it's risky in a race situation. You could, you could make a, a wrong step and go backwards. So we'll have to see how we go. And 12 cars, big team. Uh, it really is a big team. To and quite a quite a bit of responsibility from you as the technical boffin on on those cars. Look, uh, yeah, it's 12 cars, but not all under one team. So things are broken down a little bit. Some guys are completely on their own; they don't require our services. But it's it's literally three different models as well: the V8 CR6, the Turbo CR6, and this new car now, the CR7. Um, my personal focus will be more on the CR7 because it's a new product. Uh, I think the other cars are well developed now, but yes, there will be the odd problem that we haven't seen before. I will probably have to get involved and try to understand what's going on. But um, the CR6 turbos will be run by the SRT team. So we are not directly in charge, but obviously we have a big input in it. All the development again this year. Yeah, that's the other thing people don't realize, but we've been developing the CR6 turbo as well in the background. It's been, <laughs> it's been a lot of balls to juggle. We had to improve the cooling. We were very limited on cooling in the very hot conditions, which is not really the case in Saudi, but we had to, to get it behind. It was, and it's got new exhaust um, systems? Uh, no, exhaust is the same on the CR6 uh, turbo. But yeah, the, ma the major change was the cooling this year. And how did you really solve it? Just <laughs> add, add more coolers? 
Uh, yeah, the, the Audi engine comes with a combined water and oil cooling with a heat exchanger in the V. We had a failure this year where the heat exchanger broke and it mixed the oil in the water and we realized that this is a big risk. It happens in a, in a June stage, we, we can't get out of there. So we decided to kill a few birds with one stone. So we removed that, that heat exchanger and we are now doing the oil cooling separately with an, ex, an additional cooler on the back of the car. Uh, we've applied the same, the same idea to the CR7. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the main things were reliability, reliability and, and uh, increasing the cooling capacity of the cars. What is your, you know, the, in the two, two weeks of Dakar, is there something that's nagging at the back of your head where you a little bit worried about? On the CR7 or the other cars? Seven. Let's talk 7. Uh, of course, always is. Um, some parts uh, were a little bit out of tolerance, but we didn't have time to make new ones. Uh, I won't mention exactly what it is, but... It should be okay, we'll have to just keep an eye on it. Um, I know it's the case in every team where some parts are a bit dodgy. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've seen with Toyota this year with the, the shocks, we had to replace parts almost on a daily basis. It shouldn't be the case for us. We've put some measures in place, but yeah, that's the one thing I'm a little bit nervous about. Um, yeah, not much else really, and the car is working. And the separation of the axes on the, the suspension where you moved away from the ball joint and you've got roller bearings, you happy with that? I think it's more reliable. Uh, the ball joint inherently has its risks. You can have the clip coming off. You can start having big play if the guys don't service it. Um, it's got a rubber boot. It's got a rubber boot that can uh, get damaged or torn. We've had it a few times. Uh, yeah, and also when the guys service them, they can make a mistake. It's quite easy to get it wrong. I've caught, I've caught it up a few times in Dakar just before the car went out. Hey guys, this is not right. That will cause immediate failure. Um, no, we look. It's it's well. Um, let's put it that way. The, the bearing system we use is a well-known quantity, just applied to different principle. But we also it's all based on the CR6 rear suspension. So we knew the forces. We gone a bit bigger again now. Uh, so yeah, it's been pretty solid so far. You're a little bit nervous about this race. You, you're always going to be nervous because of, you know, it's so easy to let something slip. It's a small little bolt somewhere, it's a cut wire and the car stops. Uh, and uh, yeah, some people don't take it personally, I do, unfortunately. Uh, we're quite hard on ourselves in that game, you know. It's, uh, you want to see the car reach the finish line every day, that's the first goal, you know. But we've seen everywhere, you know, even the top teams like Ali, they have their own problems and the car stops sometimes. It's not only us. So, uh, I think people will appreciate it's a new product, they have to put it into context and uh, we also have to admit, or not admit, but accept the fact that, you know, we've tried our very best. Nobody develops a car in four months and puts it on the start line of a Dakar. I think we, we've achieved a little bit here. I think you've achieved uh, more than just a little bit, Julian. Well done to you and the, and the whole team. And everything of the best for Dakar and the future of of this thing, CR7, T1 Ultimate. I think it's damn fine. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Good luck. Cheers.